Well, hello there and welcome to another video here on Anton's Hardware Channel. Today's topic is one of the oldest sound cards that I own, but it is also from the series that I've talked about so many times, the x -Fi. Somehow I just keep on making videos about this card. Now I've talked about the ESI Prodigy x Energy, which is there. x Energy, the Creative x Music, the Creative x Fatality, and the Creative Titanium HD. And this time it's yet another creative sound card, and this time it's the x Elite Pro. This creative card isn't the youngest in the series. No, the x Elite Pro is among the first x that were released. Where the music version, which I covered in another review, was a stripped down version of the series and the fatality more aimed at gamers, the Elite Pro was supposed to be the top of the line, aiming at the musicians and audiophiles. Now you can tell that this X5 is the top of the line because of the signal to noise ratio, because this is the only one that has a signal to noise ratio of 116 decibels, while the rest of the sound cards have 109 decibels. And it's all because of a better digital to analog converter. But I'll get back to that a bit more into detail when I talk about it in the specifications. As usual, I got mine second hand, but this time it came with a box and that's something special because it was rather rare, reason being the price. The version cost here in the Netherlands about 240 euros. When you keep in mind that the higher end video card would cost about 300 to 350 euros back then, 240 euros for a sound card was considered very pricey, especially back then. The Creative Fatality was a lot cheaper at about 130 euros and the Music 100 euros, so most people would buy one of those. On the outside it is one of the most beautifully designed sound cards that I've ever seen. To me this is pleasing and it almost is a piece of art. The x cards are even responsible for me having an interest in gaming sound. The design of the earlier x cards does look very similar, but the design of the PCBs do differ a bit, as you can see here. On the card there's one feature that is misunderstood a lot, the little black boxy thing. I've read somewhere that someone thought it was an infrared receiver, but that is a somewhat dumb thing to say. If the card is in a PC case without any windows, how would the infrared signal reach this receiver? No, it's just something to make the card look cool, because this is what is underneath there, two LEDs. Now this idea was used again in the Fatality, but was skipped in the music. On the Elite Pro, it was blue with the x logo, and on the Fatality, it was red with the Fatality logo. Everything is in the box, cables, manuals, remote, even a CD, and it has a remote and even an I.O. console. Now well, this I.O. console is what makes this, makes this card truly unique. Sadly, my I.O. console is missing one rubber foot, but that really doesn't matter because I have this. And I, I can now put the console in sideways so it doesn't take up that much space on my desk. If you can get your hands on an Elite Pro, keep in mind that you need to power this card with an old Molex floppy drive connector. The card itself will be detected and even work, but the console will not. For my longtime viewers, this is an answer I asked about five years ago. Back then, I didn't understand what this connector was for, and I couldn't understand why the card needed to be powered when it worked perfectly without. Now I do understand. With the console, you have all the settings at your fingertips you could want from an x product. Now from left to right, you have the headphone output, two line-ins, and where one is a mic in, two volume dials for those inputs, and then there are dials for the MIDI, EAX, CMSS 3D, and the 24-bit crystallizer. Now MIDI is a way of using musical instruments. EAX used to be this kick-ass method of creating true 3D audio based on the 3D environment you were gaming in. CMSS 3D is a way of converting stereo or 2D audio into 3D audio, 
And the 24 bits crystallizer is a way of upscaling your audio to better fidelity. Now, these last two methods are things that I've never been a big fan of. You just cannot convert audio from 2D to 3D without any additional information. So what this usually means that a lot of reverbs, reverbs and, and echoes, echoes are, being, are added being added to make it sound 3D-ish. But to this day, I've never heard any good implementation of this, and that includes CMSS 3D. The crystallizer was a cool idea at the beginning of this century when nearly everyone had poor quality MP3, so upscaling was a cool idea and a good idea. It sort of did work. A lot of reviewers back then were very excited about this technology, but nowadays it isn't just that good anymore or rather useful, as the quality of the streaming services has improved the overall audio quality dramatically. On the back you have a grounding for a phono and a selector switch to enable the phono preamp. There are two line ins, a DIN input, a MIDI in and a MIDI output, an optical in, an optical out, and also an SP diff in and output. And last but not least, you have the connector for the special cable. So enough about the external bits. Let's take a closer look at the inside of the cards and the console. The sound card uses the same EMU 20K1 as the main chip as all the other x use. On some it has a cool heatsink, but on others it doesn't. Here it just has a sticker with the extreme fidelity logo on it. It can handle audio at an impressive 24 bits and 129 kilohertz, and is, this is just a really good processing chip. It will remain the mainstay in the lineup of creative cards for a very long time. Now the sound card is also rather special as it's the only card in the whole x lineup that uses the Xilinx CPLD and mechanical relays. The card also comes with memory on it, like all the others. On this card it has a whopping 32 megabytes of DDR memory, and that's DDR, uh, DDR1 memory, not DDR4 or 5. Also, the box itself mentioned that it has 64 megabytes of memory on board, and that's just not the case. There's just 32 megabytes on board, as you can see here. The 32M uh, in the model name of this chip indicates that, and there is, isn't even a 64 megabytes version of this chip. The reason for this memory is about the same idea as using a sound card in the first place, to offload the CPU from its audio task by transferring this to the sound card. The idea behind the memory is that in games the smaller audio bits like gunshots, explosions, footsteps, etc. could be stored in the memory of the sound card when the game was being loaded. The advantage was when gaming the CPU could do other stuff and not be busy with constantly transferring audio bits from the main memory to the sound card and thus giving it more frames per second. Now, At the time when this x was released the AMD 64-4000 was considered very high end and I had that CPU. The CPU was already very busy because it was a single core CPU. So offloading it with these chores beforehand seems logical and efficient. Now even though this is a pretty good idea, it had two problems. One was that the dual core CPUs were just around the corner and thus the CPU could handle a lot more chores. Resulting that there was that the impact of offloading the CPU was becoming less and less apparent. Second, and maybe more importantly, the game had to be coded so it would support this and there are only a handful of games that support it. Now in the end it died quietly and nobody ever heard of it again. Somehow the idea that sound cards still have, an, have a big impact on the frames per second is a myth that persists to this day. Now if you want to know more about this subject, please take a look at one of my videos about this very subject. So what else is in there? Uh, the digital to analog converter, which I talked about in the beginning, is a better quality than the other x cards. 
whereas they had to make do with the CS4382 from Sears Logic, already a pretty nice digital to analog converter, the Elite Pro uses the CS4398, which is a 120 decibels, 192 kilohertz multi-bit DAC with volume control. Now here the 120 decibels is referring to the dynamic range. This was, at least back then, the top of the line that Sears Logic had on offer. And there were four of these on the sound card. Reason being that this is a stereo digital to analog converter. And since the sound card can handle up to eight outputs, six for speakers and two for headphones, there's a real need for this. The analog to digital converter or ADC is a super high performance 192 kilohertz and 24 bits two-channel analog to digital converter and this one was made by AKM. Now this is a truly high quality ADC and one that a lot of musicians wanted. And even today it is a really good analog to digital converter. And what about the console? Is it just a pass-through and lets the card do all the work? Well, no. There is a board in there that actually does stuff. Now, let's start with this Dutch piece of marvel made by Philips. It's the 97 LPC 762, which is a single chip microcontroller, which well, controls the boards and the dials. Another microcontroller is present, again made by Philips, well, with a rather long name. There are also a couple of ADCs present, and this time it's the excellent Burr Brown PCM1804. Now, today Burr Brown is part of Texas Instruments, but when Texas Instruments acquired Burr Brown, the brand was so good that they also decided to keep the name and the BB logo. This ADC is capable of 24 bits and 192 kilohertz, and is also a very good analog to digital to converter even today. So on paper, there are a lot of decent components used, but does this translate to good audio? Well, let's talk about it in the listening sessions. Now, my original plan was to test both the output of the console and the card itself, but sadly that didn't go as planned. When setting up the card and the console, everything just worked fine. The remote worked, it processed audio, and I was happy with its condition. I turned off the test bench and did my regular work for a week, and when I wanted to do the listening session in the write mark results, something went horribly wrong. No audio was being produced by the console. The console is powered, the dials work, I can see that windows that audio is being produced, but I don't get any sound anymore. And the remote also doesn't work anymore. From what I remember, the audio from the console was still pretty good. I listened to it for about five minutes, but I didn't do a full session. I did do a full session with the card itself, and it sounded like any other XY card. And I just love that sound. It's very creative. The highs and the middles are a bit too overemphasized, but not too much. The bass is nice and goes very deep. The sound stage is just wonderful, and I remember the ye olden days when I used the X5 Fatality for my old gaming rig. Now I do have still have very fond memories of that card. And Ride Mark says the same. The frequency response gets an excellent with a near perfect graph to underline that. The total harmonic distortion is very good and is also what I heard. The audio is just being reproduced in a very good way without too much distortion. The stereo crosstalk, something that a lot of external sound cards or digital to analog converters always struggled with, gets a good, giving the card a general performance of good. Uh, this is a bit low for my taste. If I had to give it a score, it would get a very good. Something I didn't include in this video was the driver in interface, mainly because it is identical to all the other interfaces I've reviewed for the other x cards. Also, there's no additional interface for the console. The interface gets the jobs done, but it just looks outdated. Truly a 2000-ish look. So what about my conclusion? What do I think about the x Elite Pro? 
Now, if this card was released today, I would still recommend it. It's just a very good card. It gets everything right. Okay, despite the console not working properly anymore, the card itself did everything that I could and would want. And with this ending, I would like to thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video. And I would like to see you next time. See you then. Bye-bye.